Tonight I'm going to carry on somewhat in the vein that I was on Sunday, but I'm going to deal with the doctrine of glorification. And we won't really exhaust it, but you'll just get <clears throat> some information that you can put in your library of your mind, and hopefully it'll give you some give you some strength. I'm going to call your attention, first of all, to the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Romans 8. The Bible makes it clear that we have been justified by God's grace. He's given us grace because he's allowed us to come into an arena whereby we can embrace his word to receive his grace. The gospel that you and I have embraced has been preached unto us by the grace of God, our unmerited favor. He has honored and dignified we Gentiles that were not his people with the highest privilege by taking us into his kingdom. All who love him and continue faithful unto death shall inherit glory eternally. Those he justified, the Bible says he glorified. For all the honors which he confers on those of us who respect him, he brings us into a place where we will have endless happiness. We must consider tonight that the work of justification is coupled with sanctification. Because there is an obligation to each individual who has been justified to be morally upright, which I'll call sanctification. Justification being the foundation and the beginning of this great work. None will be glorified that are not justified. It has to justify it before it glorifies you. And those who are justified are invited to this place by the effectual call of God. He called us. And therefore, when he called us, I'm going to say, what did he call us with? How did he call us? He called us by the gospel message. Someone preached the gospel to us. We heard that clarion call of the gospel and embraced it. And after believing, he sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. So salvation has now come to the Gentile as well as the Jew. In the 29th verse of Romans 8, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Notice, in his foreknowledge, his predestination, he's not so much speaking here of individuals. When he's speaking of anyone that's going to be saved, will be conformed. They're going to do what he says. God does not condemn one to hell and the other one to heaven and work against your will. He gives us all a free will. And we can say yes or no, though he knows what kind of decision we're going to make before we make it. Therefore, you can't blame him for choosing someone since he knows. But he gives you that opportunity. That's a part of God's word that's a mystery to us. There's some things that we just can't totally understand. We just have to accept it by faith. And so he says this, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He brings in his resurrection. 
He's the first one from the dead, and might I add, glorified. For when he rose from the dead, he had a glorified body, which says to you and I, we shall be glorified also. Then he goes on to say, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. If you notice, everything's in the past tense. That's because he's God and can call the end from the beginning, and he knows everything all together at the same time because he dwells in eternity. Beginning and ending is really just for us. Actually, God has no beginning and he has no ending. It helps us to understand him better. And so therefore, he inhabits eternity. He dwells there. And his plan that he has given to man was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. That's something else we can't really comprehend. Before there was anything, he had already provided everything for the redemption of the creature called man. Of all the things that God created, man was special. And so he imparts a part of himself into man. Man has an obligation to worship and to serve his creator, hands down. And so those he justified, he glorified. Remember now, he called them. All of us in this room have heard that call. But we had to respond to the call. For many are called, but few are chosen. The call has gone out, but everybody doesn't respond. And he does not work against your will. That's another mystery to us. How he can call us, knowing that some will reject and some will accept. And knows who will do either. Amen. And so he called us. And how we know we are chosen is because we answered the call. (laughs) We answered the call to salvation. Sealed us with his Holy Spirit. And therefore, we're certain that we are called and chosen. If you reject him, even though the call may go out, you have no part in justification and glorification. All that will be saved will be those who are justified and glorified. Amen. Let me show you a portion of God's word in St. John chapter 1. He says this. In verse number 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Talking about the Jews, which brings in another very salient point, very important point. Of all the nations on the planet, God is the one that chose Israel. It wasn't because they were large or better or didn't have sin. He just showed them mercy. They weren't a big nation. As they are today, they're very small. But God showed them grace and mercy. And he has a tendency to do that. He chose us, who were not a people, to be his people. Can we charge God, who is the potter? We're just the clay. We just thank God we know that we've been called and chosen by him. Then he says this in verse number 11. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But here it is. But as many as received him, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Because he, we received what he had to say, God empowers us to be his sons and daughters. What great grace. What great grace. Then he says, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, 
nor the will of man, but of God. Understand, this salvation you and I are enjoying today is totally grace and mercy. Amen. Almost make you ask sometimes, why me, Lord? How come I received it? I don't know, but I'm glad that I did. I was out like a day. I'm glad that when I heard the call of the gospel, I obeyed it. Amen. Might I say to you, this is one of the anemic parts of the Christian church today. You can hardly find anybody preaching the gospel. Amen. Which we were studying in class on last night. We're at the close of a dispensation, an age. Most people don't even know what time it is. But actually the dispensation of grace is coming to a screeching halt. And it could be this year, next year, but it's, it's right at the door. And because of what is about to take place, God has said there's signs that you know it's getting ready to take place. And one of them is apostasy. False prophets. And you have to be real careful who you hear preaching. See, a person can be a real good orator and sway you with speech, but you got to listen to what are they saying? Because it could be lethal. Amen. See, you, you want to be in a ministry where they promote the virgin birth, the sinless life of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, ascension of Jesus Christ, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, doctrine of redemption, doctrine of reconciliation, uh, all these essential doctrines which have escaped most people because they don't hear them. And we really don't get the human heart's attention as much as we need to, to drive these points home. Because really these doctrines I'm teaching you, these are glorious doctrines. Doctrine of justification is something else. That God would justify someone who doesn't deserve it and provide a vehicle his own body to pay the penalty for a man's sin and step in his place, suffer, amen, the vengeance of the law to have to die in the place that an individual could have everlasting life. What a mighty program. Amen. Can't even totally comprehend how a thrice holy God would wrap himself in humanity to purchase the salvation of a human being, amen, does not let down his standard of holiness, but provides a program that he is not going to be offended and the child of God doesn't get away with sin. So he steps in and places himself in our stead, takes our blow of death, and all we have to do is believe him and trust him. And by doing that, we'll be justified. And he's appeased his own justice and has not diminished from his holiness. What a mighty God we serve tonight. Amen. So he can say, those are justified will be glorified. Amen. So we are the people that God has called, and we know it because we have received him. Good to receive him. Give me Matthew chapter number 19. Matthew 19. We're standing on the, <laughs> the shore of a dispensation changing. And might I say to all of you that are saved, don't ever come out, let it come out of your mouth. This is too hard. This ain't hard. <laughs> this is glorious. Just because there's a battle going on, it ain't hard. Amen. Not if you comprehend. The way of the transgress is hard. <laughs> That's what's hard. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin has reproached any people. And sin pays terrible dividends. But righteousness will exalt a nation. If I were to go down the line of people that are having so much trouble, I'm not, I'm not being mean to you, I'm telling you the truth. It's because you won't be obedient. See, when you know what to do and don't do it, that's sin. But sin has a penalty. 
And even though God will forgive sin, there's some scars to go along with it. And you hang up there too long, you might lose your mind. Your mind will snap on you. Amen. And you'll be past feeling. Huh? And you may seek it, but can't find repentance like Esau. Oh, my. It's good to stay in the house. But it's safe over here. Because when you've been justified by God, he lets you know all things, though it may not be good, is working for your good. But read the rest of who love God and are called according to his purpose. You'll never prove to God that you love him if you don't obey him. He says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Hallelujah. Matthew 19. Peter was engaged in a conversation with the Lord here. In verse number 26. But Jesus beheld them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Kind of sound like human beings, am I right? What, what am I going to get out the deal? Huh? Why am I doing this, huh? Kind of sound like human beings. And Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration, my Lord. You know what he's talking about? He's talking when the renewal of all things take place. You who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne, here's that word now, of his glory. You also shall sit upon the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So he says, there is dividends in following me. Actually, this particular word, regeneration, renewal, is only found two times in the New Testament. It's found here, and I'm going to get to it in Titus in a minute, in the third chapter, in the fifth verse. But it deals with the renewing palingenesis. It deals with uh, a, a renewal of all things. But God has done something marvelous. Not only does he promise there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and a renewal, but he starts with the human first. I'm going to make the people new first. Then I'm going to take them into a new arena. So he works on us before he works on the cosmos. For your Bible says the whole creation is groaning and travailing together in pain together unto now. What are they waiting for? Waiting to wit. Really what it's saying, waiting to wit your glorification. Waiting to wit the redemption of your body. Because your soul has already been redeemed. So what we're waiting for now is our glorification of our body. And so when that takes place, a whole lot of stuff starts rolling. Amen. When you and I receive resurrected bodies that God has promised and cannot lie. He says, those of you that have followed me in the regeneration. Then he goes on to say, and everyone that have forsaken houses, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit everlasting life. What a bargain. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Remember now, he came into the Jews. Actually, who were first, who now become last. Because as you continue to read Romans, the ninth chapter, and 10th, 11th chapter, in the 11th chapter, there is a renewal, revitalization of Israel. He's going to set his hand the second time upon them. And right now, whether they know it or not, that's what they're waiting for. But everything, if I can use this word, is on hold, waiting for us to be glorified. Amen. The moment the church is glorified, we receive our resurrected bodies and go to be with the Lord, then Israel can count about seven years before they receive 
the new kingdom. Hallelujah. So you and I who have been called and obeyed the gospel, amen. He says, I've justified you. I'm going to glorify you. Paul goes on to say in that 18th verse, he says, I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. He, he had an understanding. God has a glorification that he's going to give to his people. And that's why we want to keep on preaching it till it gets all down in your spirit. Hallelujah. Because this is really the child of God's joy. Because he, uh, we like Abraham know we have no continuing city here, but we look for one to come. Glory be to God. So I am certain that there's nothing we can compare glorification with. It's beyond human comprehension. Amen. We just look at it and it sounds good and we embrace it. But really to totally comprehend it, we'll have to be there when it takes place. But he says it's going to take place. Glory be to God. So I reckon myself also that whatever's going on is not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in you and I. Thank God the justified, glorified people. Amen. Uh, dealing and living for a God who calls the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. And so God, he knows everybody in the body of Christ who will be in the body of Christ, but he doesn't make anybody get in the body of Christ. He, he, he some kind of way, he, he gets us into this place, but he does not violate our freedom of choice. So it's my job to keep on just preaching the gospel and somebody say, oh, I want that. Amen. Because the gospel is calling them. Then, then what must I do? Then they do on the day of Pentecost? Amen. What must we do to be saved? They ask the question. You don't read no altar call there. They say, men and brother, what shall we do? Huh? Amen. And they told him what to do. And that's what I'm looking for on Wednesdays and Sundays. They ask me what you ought to do. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you. Amen. In the name. Because it's all on the object of faith who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me tell you something. When you get the right view of God, amen, it changes everything about you. Amen. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, what you do with your body, how you talk, where you walk, all of it. Amen. If a man or woman really be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. There's no way in the world to really be in Christ, walking in the spirit, and commit abominations. Not if you're really in Christ. Amen. And don't let these folks soft pedal you. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, you ought to stay out of these churches that never say nothing against sin. Sin is the problem. Sin is the reproach. Amen. People want a smooth message. They don't say nothing about that which takes a man to the depths of hell. Amen. And, and causes him to be separated and divorced from his God. Amen. Tell us how to live. And the Bible's full of information. Those he justified. Remember, justification and sanctification go together. Man that is justified is going to be a sanctified man. Amen. Because remember what it took for me to be justified. He died. Romans 6 said, and we have to die with him. And we're buried with him. We rise up to walk in the newness of life. Just coming down saying, oh, I'm a Christian now and make a few shouts. Then go back out and do the same thing all over. That ain't being born again. No, it isn't. And let me say this. I'm getting ready to get real hard on you tonight. There's no excuse for a child of God to be overtaken in sin. None. No excuse. You have to willfully submit to it. Amen. Well, I can't help it. Yes, you can. Devil made me do it. That's a lie, too. Devil can't make you do nothing. Only thing the devil can do is suggest. He can tempt you. But you got power over the devil. And over every temptation. Amen. All right. Amen. Pray for me. I'm going to pray with you. I ain't praying for you. I'm praying with you. Amen. I got to do all the praying. No, they help you. you pray too. Amen. Just asking for prayer all the time. Amen. Come on. Let's pray together about this situation. We'll pray together about this. You want me to do all the praying. You want me to miss meals when well, you're sitting around doing what you want to do. No, no. If you pray, I'll pray with you. You ain't going to pray. I may not pray. There's a promise here. There's a promise here. 
Amen. That I'm going to be rewarded just for my faithfulness. I don't deserve it, but God rewards faithfulness. Amen. Amen. I mean, what more can he do for you? To tell you is you're already glorified. Well, he's saying your citizenship is already in heaven. You're just hanging out down here for a few more days. This ain't your home. Your citizenship is in heaven. You've been transferred. You're just here now to be an ambassador to tell somebody else about justification and glorification. That's why you're here. The reason why you're living is to tell somebody else about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. That's the main reason the church is here, to be a light in a dark world, to be the salt of the earth, that we might promote the name of Jesus. That's why we're here. Everything else is a fringe benefit. Your job, your house, your car, just fringe benefits. Amen. But the main thing I'm here for is to live a life so, hallelujah, that nobody will look at my lifestyle and say, I don't want your God. Huh? Because the sin is hard on you if you're a hypocrite. When you're a hypocrite, it's hard to convince somebody you got something better. Hallelujah. If you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Amen. And so if you say you got all this going for you, let's see how you live every day. Amen. Because your calling card is your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can't negotiate with sin. A, a, a tiny lie here and a big lie here and a medium-sized lie here, a little fornication here, no fornication there. No, 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 no. It's cold turkey. It's living an upright life every day when we respect who he is and called us to his eternal glory. You say, I'm glorified? Then thank you, Jesus. Amen. I've been justified by your grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Titus chapter number three. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 3. Yeah, thank God. He saved us from our sins. <laughs> yeah, not to stay in sin. I said, just come as you are. Yeah, come as you are, but don't stay as you are. <laughs> it ought to be a change. Amen. There's no people on the planet that have the possibility to have the kind of joy that the saint has. Because his is eternal. And it's based on the word of God. Man can search to and fro and will never be happy. Because you can't be happy or at peace without the peace giver. Hallelujah. Titus 3. You ever notice even in the celebrity world and the, and the entertainment world, how come they, they, don't, they don't ever have no peace? Because your, 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 your peace is not based on what you possess. It's an inward power that's on the inside, an inward knowledge, amen, that gives you the mental stability, amen, whereby you can Praise and worship God. When a man or woman is at peace within themselves, they're going to get along with a whole bunch of folk that are hard to get along with even. That's when you're at peace because you're not intimidated by anything. Hallelujah. It's all temporary. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. See, we're learning this. I'm getting to a scripture in a minute. I'll show you how you got to just keep on growing. And you got the power to grow. Titus 3. Thank you, Lord. Are you hurting my feelings? I ain't hurting your feelings. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Coming to church just for the fishes and the loaves ain't going to save you. Amen. Let me emphasize this. And being soft on that which is contrary to God's will will never bring about lasting peace. Hallelujah. You're in the place where peace runs rampant. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of peace, righteousness, joy, but it's all in the Holy Ghost. It's in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. There's no finer gift given to man than the Holy Ghost. God gave you his very best when he gave you the Holy Ghost. 
he gave you himself, Christ in you, hope of glory. That's why I know you don't have to go back to a beggarly way of living. Though many have come through these doors and went back. You know what that is? They weren't good ground saints. Some seed fell, fell in stony places. Some fell by the wayside. Some fell between the thorns and thistles. And only 25% fell in good ground and only a third produced a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, my Lord. See, I thought they were saved. They got saved initially. But they did not continue in faith. Amen. They didn't continue. But this thing starts with faith, continues in faith, and ends in faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. That's why you're here tonight. You keep building yourself up on your most holy faith. If you don't hear this on a regular basis, you, you'll diminish. You, you actually will go back. Oh, yeah, you know, you need your tank filled weekly. Oh, yeah, you do. Because there's a whole lot of stuff nipping at your heels and, and thoughts and doubts to try to creep in. Amen. One of the biggest problems in a church like this is half the folk asleep when they come to church. Hey, many eyes are open, but their minds are asleep. And they sound asleep. I'm not saying that to be mean. I know. They sleep. Because they, they don't have the joy. They don't have the peace. They don't have the lifestyle. It's a terrible thing to say you go to Peace After Stalic. When you get to Starbucks, you're all together a different person. Whole nother personality when you leave here. Something wrong. Amen. You ought to be the same everywhere you go. You don't curse in church. You don't curse outside of church. Titus 3. Don't laugh at me, mother. I'm doing the best I can. I'm a darling. Notice what he says concerning the kindness of God. I'm going to read this from the NIV version. First chapter number 3, verse number 3. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. That's supposed to be past tense. At one time, once upon a time, amen, we live in malice, envy, being hated, and hating one another. Whew. Boy, that's what God said. I didn't say that. That's what he said. And, 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 and it's true. If you've been on this planet any period of time, you know this is true. Amen. But it should be past tense. Huh? When somebody says to me, oh, I just can't smoke and we stop smoking weed. Yeah, you can. Just stop. We've got to help me through it. No, no. What about repenting? Too many saints getting high. I said, I've had them right here smoking dope when they leave here. Right here in the choir. You're smoking weed. I was going to tell you. You don't wean yourself off of marijuana, you just cut it loose. It should be past tense. And don't try to threaten me. You know, if I get nervous, I just have to have something. Oh, no, no, don't go there. What about prayer? You ever thought about getting down on your knees and talking to God? Uh, uh, you, you rather talk to the weed man, get you a primo, rather than get on your knees and talk to God. But if you talk to God, he'll help you through this thing. You keep on leaning on the world, you'll never be delivered. And you'll be living under condemnation. You won't have no peace. Shame to come to church. When all you have to do is ask the Savior to help you. Oh, he's wonderful. He delivers. I'm justified. I've been justified of my past. Why would you get out of jail and want to go back? Been incarcerated for 40 years and you get released. And you want to go back to the prison. You've been institutionalized. You need to break off from that stuff. God has done great things for you and I. 
Amen. This is past tense. Now God has given us power to have control because we are the glorified bunch. Who's going to point the sinner to heaven except somebody that has a testimony? Now, I ain't talking about a testimony that you got a new pair of shoes. I ain't talking about that. Amen. I'm talking about a testimony that God has delivered us. Amen. I got, I got a burning testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Have the vote be test the line. We used to have a brother at my home church. He testified so many times that he cooked rice for hours and hours and it didn't burn up. What kind of testimony is that? Who cares how long you cook rice? Went outside and dollars was floating down in the air. Ain't no dollars floating out of heaven. Who do you think you're talking to? If it flew down, it's because somebody must have had some money that dropped out the window from their wallet. Y'all think I'm kidding. I'm telling you what. <laughs> Watch this here. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. You know what that means? He delivered us. Saved means delivered. I am delivered. And God's given us power to stay delivered. He don't call you to be on a roller coaster up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. He gives you power to those who receive him. To them he gave power to be the sons of God. Hallelujah. You're not depending on yourself. You're depending on the power that's in you. Glory be to God. Oh, help us, Lord. Amen. He saved us not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy, you can never be good enough to be saved. Let me say that again. If you're trying to be good enough to be saved, you'll remain lost. Because salvation is of the Lord. Nobody can come with accolades to warrant salvation. It's the grace of God that anybody's saved. But a self-righteous spirit is one that I'm a pretty good person. I worked on my job. I'm a nice guy. Bring in my neighbor's paper. Walk old ladies across the street. Think I need to go to heaven. That ain't how you get there. It's by the mercy of God. All have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. God has done something in his infinite wisdom to justify us and glorify us. He said, I've justified you, I've glorified you. In other words, I do a complete job. What I start, I finish. If a man remains in me, he's glorified. Glory be to God. Watch out now. How did you save us, Lord? He saved us through the washing of rebirth. And the renewal by the Holy Ghost. So your Bible says regeneration. Am I right? We know what he's talking about? Same word that you just got through reading in Matthew 19. Those are the two places that you find it. He's made us a new creation. He recreated you and I. Amen. So it was the washing of rebirth when you heard the gospel and repented. Said, what must I do? We water baptized you by immersion in the name of Jesus. Calling on his name. And the blood is enacted, and your sins are taken away. Then he fills you with the life of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost gives you power. And also signals. It gives you signals on what not to be part of and what to be part of. Before any child of God goes into sin, the Holy Ghost will always speak. He says, oh, don't do that. Don't go there. Ah, no, no, no. It'll tell you when it's off limits. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have to question, know that's probably wrong to do. If you have to question and say, oh, then I, nah, I'm going to leave this alone. I don't feel good doing this. I don't believe God can accept this. God doesn't conform to us. We conform to him. I, I'm a glorified child of God. I, I'm going to see Jesus. Hey, man, Paul wasn't him and hard about if he had a crown laid up in glory. He said, that's a crown laid up for me. In other words, I know I'm glorified. He said, those he justified, he glorified. He realized, though I was a blasphemer and a murderer, amen, I've been justified by the blood of Jesus. That's really saying something. He said, according to sins, he said, there was no sinner worse than me. He said, I was the chief of sinners. But he also understood how effective the blood of Jesus is. He said, amen, I've been justified. Not because I deserve it, but because God showed me mercy. 
Hallelujah. Then God gets the glory out of my life when I give him the accolades that's due his name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You read his pedigree. Amen. He said he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, touching the law. He was perfect. Amen. And all the things he suffered as a child of God, he said, I call, I, 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 everything is dung, waste material. Amen. For the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, to know who Jesus is and to know his work. Amen. They're trying to, it's an article I'm going to read when I leave here. Amen. It comes out of Lipscomb University. I didn't get to read it. I saw the headlines of it. For us to have peace with the rest of the world, we're going to have to lay down some of our doctrines from the Bible. That's a lie out of hell. I ain't laying down nothing. They want you to, they want you to get rid of the deep to your Christ and amen they, they want you to get rid of the salient points they got us where we are we can't negotiate anything it's not negotiable the blood is not negotiable amen Holy Ghost is not negotiable sanctification is not negotiable hallelujah glory to God thank you Jesus amen and that's how he saved us then he goes on to say amen hallelujah whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might be heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy servant, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. Uh, stress it, Pastor Swansea. Stress it. Do what's good. Do what's right. Hallelujah. Live the upright life. Glory be to God. Shouldn't be a hint of fornication mentioned amongst us. I know that there is, but it shouldn't be. Every child of God ought to be sanctified. Hallelujah. Separated from sin under God. Not only to give him glory on Sunday night, running around the church, but give him glory on Monday night when ain't nobody around you. Give him glory, uh, hallelujah, amen, every day of your life, hallelujah, because he's worthy, amen, because the praise begins with you, within you, amen, we have collective praise, amen, but it starts off with the individual. Amen. So when I see myself, amen, before my humongous God, I see someone in need of salvation that he's reached down and picked up and justified by his mercy. Therefore, I applaud and worship him for showing me such grace and mercy. And so for the rest of my life, all I want to do, amen, is please him as we had our theme sometime, striving for spiritual excellency. Glory be to God. And in the midst of temptations and the battle, amen, Jesus always wins. My allegiance to him overcomes the suggestions of the devil, the flesh, and the world. I'm not saying you won't be tempted. Everybody's tempted. But my allegiance to Christ and my faith in him overrides my allegiance to my flesh. It overrides my allegiance to the suggestion of the adversary. It overrides, amen, what might have me incarcerated, amen, in some type of, of a passion before I got saved. Now this knowledge of being justified, amen, takes presidency, amen, and everything else takes a back seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God because I have been justified by God's unmerited favor, and I give his name the to glory tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for regeneration. Let me have 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3. Thank God. Those he justified, he glorified. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. Paul brings out the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. He brings out that the Israelites still have a veil over their face. They can't really see what you and I see right now as a whole. But God has taken the veil off of us. We don't have the veil over us now. We can see clearly. And let me tell you something. You stay in the will of God and whatever question you have about him... If you're not double-minded, he'll give you an answer. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. He won't even 
fuss at you. But he must do it in faith. And he can't waver because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. Stay double-minded, you'll never prosper. You have to sell out. But whenever you sell out, he'll always provide. And sometimes he's going to test you to see if you're sold out. There's some things he's going to allow you to go through. To see, am I really sold out? Will I swear to my own hurt? Change not? Glory be to God. If I totally sell out, he's going to open up doors for me. going to open up doors for me. He's going to help me get through. Because if you do it the wrong way, you ain't going to never win. Hey Amen. Let me tell you, folk that do stuff wrong, they don't get away with it. After a while, it's going to come and get them. After a while, even ill-gotten gain will slip out your fingers. If you cheat to get it, know somebody else going to cheat you after a while. Because whatever you sow, no, you're going to reap it after a while. Oh, glory be to God. I'd rather be able to lay down in peace at night knowing I did what's right than to have all of the bells and whistles and have no sleep. So he says the difference between our covenant and their covenant. So he goes on to say this, verse number 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. It's good to turn to the Lord because God opens up your understanding. Now the Lord is that spirit. Now the Lord, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberation. Glory be to God. That man or woman has now been set free. Now watch out now. But we all, here's a powerful verse, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let me read that from the NIV version. Amen. And we who with unveiled face all reflect the Lord's glory, being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So what's the Holy Ghost going to do? It's going to cause me to grow and mature week by week. What you were in your saved life two years ago, you ought to be down the road two years later. In other words, I'm being conformed to him now. Amen. Stuff is now dropped off. Huh? And I put on righteousness. And the Holy Ghost has taken me from one level to another level. Talking about, he's taking me to another level. You know what that level is? It ain't financial gain all the time. Most, most times it's not going to be financial gain. He's going to take you to a level of maturity in spiritual things. Hallelujah. And he just kicks in the rest. I said he just kicks in the rest. But, but, but he wants to take you, amen, to that spiritual place. Because remember, did not Paul say, don't you know that you shall judge the world? Don't you know we shall judge angels? Do you realize there's a responsibility? That's why we have to be fair in everything we do down here. Amen. Because I have to make decisions every day. You know I get burned a whole lot of times, but I'm making decisions. Amen. But I got to do what's right. Amen. And I don't, and because <laughs> I, I can't use the judicial system on you like I will on the outsider. Because we ought to have enough wisdom in here to settle the difference. Don't you know you got to judge angels? You know, just the world? It, there's none that are intelligent? None that are holy? Sure they are. Paul was being sarcastic in 1 Corinthians 6. You mean there's nobody? There's nobody that got common sense, so to speak? Sure we got somebody that got some sense. Thank God. Have the Holy Ghost. And now the Holy Ghost is causing me to see Christ at a different level each week, each month. 
each year. Amen. Let me tell you some of you new saints, things that you were struggling with a year ago, it won't be a struggle next year. There's some stuff you've gone through, amen, that you were really struggling through, that now God has brought you over that thing, it won't be as hard, because now you've been brought over that. There's some things you just, eh, not for me, keep on stepping, because of your maturity in God. What seemed like, oh, how am I going to break out of this? How can I stop doing that? I said, oh, ain't no problem now. Amen. Because my maturity has changed. Amen. Your, your nerves are not going to get as rattled and anxiety won't be so prevalent. Because they say, huh? Amen. This ain't no big deal. And keep on stepping. Hallelujah. Amen. I spend countless hours with saints who will not come to Bible class and want to know why they can't get no deliverance. I told somebody, I said, don't have no joy because you don't really believe this thing. You can actually teach it and not believe it. You can be a Sunday school teacher teaching this and don't believe it. You just know what the letter says. But these words got to get off the page. And they got to get down in your soul if they're going to do you any good. You got to eat the whole roll. Because if I'm just a hearer and not a doer, I'm fooling myself. I want to be a hearer and a doer. Amen. Hey we're sitting in class right now. We're, we're learning how to live a life pleasing to God in a world that's so corrupt. Glory be to God. And it's a pleasure, Lord. Teach me thy ways, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a justified, glorified child of God. I want to rightly represent you. And the Holy Ghost has taken me from one degree of glory to another. For the Lord, who is that spirit ever ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Amen. He, he's, he's bigger in my life now than he was 20 years ago or 10 years ago. He means more now than he ever meant before to me. That's the way it's supposed to be. The love affair ought to increase and not decrease. It should be no diminishing of my love for God as I keep on walking with God. It should be ever increasing. For the more I learn about him, the more I love him closer I get to home, amen, my former house, amen, is pale in view, amen, because I see now a city, as Abraham said, I'm looking for a city now, amen, I left Ur of Chaldees by faith, not knowing where I was going, but I'm looking for a city, amen, hallelujah, I'm looking for a place that is stationary, because the 13th chapter, he says, and there is no continuing city here, but we look for one to come, amen, hallelujah, Glory be to God. So life now is ever increasing the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Glory be to God. And thank God for the Holy Ghost that he has given unto us. Amen. For the justified and the glorified ones. Amen. Where are you taking this, Lord? I'm going to glorify you. Got something for you. You're going to see me as I am. What a promise. Amen. These men weren't writing that stuff down just to fill up space. These are written for our ammunition that we may know what God has done, doing, and getting ready to do for us. Hallelujah. All of us who are faithful and looking for the Lord, next step for us is to witness glorification. See, he can speak of the future as though it already has come to pass. Though right now, we are saved and children of God, but there also is a futuristic portion of it. We're waiting for the redemption of our body. Amen. And everybody in this room ought to be hoping they're going to get another body because the one you're sitting with right now is deteriorating. Now that's a fact. Jack. 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We ought to appreciate God more and more. The Lord, you mean you have, a, you have something else for me better than this? Amen. You have, you have something, Lord, better than this? You got a place where you're going to take me? Hallelujah. You mean you got a place better than this? And he says, yes, those he justified, he glorified. Remember, the aim here is I'm going to raise you up. He said, this is the will of God, to raise you up, that you can enjoy the life that is really life. But I had to put you through the test of faith. 
You had, I, I require a man or woman to have faith in me. But I'm going to give you enough information, enough information to satisfy your faith. It won't satisfy your curiosity, but it'll satisfy your faith. Because there's some curiosity. There's some things we really don't know. We want to know. Ain't going to know till we get there. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I think Paul said it this way. He said that my outward man is perishing. It's deteriorating. But my inward man is being renewed day by day. It, uh, when I eulogize Brother Ray next Friday, one thing I can say about Ray, man, he fought right down to the end. As his body just deteriorated, he kept going to work. So I want to go back to work. And when people tried to talk to him, he witnessed to them. He started telling them about the Lord and about salvation and what have you. Amen. Right up to the end. Amen. And we ought to be doing that before the end. Amen. Because you don't know when your end is going to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's the child of God. Because when the outward man is perishing, the inward man. Huh? Being renewed day by day. Amen. Paul wasn't preaching the funeral when he gave you the fourth and fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. He was letting you know if this earthly house or this tabernacle dissolve. He actually was telling you the same thing. Basically, he's telling you in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm telling you, God has something for us beyond your wildest expectations. Amen. Glorification. This is why I came, that I might raise you up with a glorified body. And I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit to give you as a guarantee. And when I give it to you, it's going to take you from glory to glory to glory. And because I've been so merciful and kind to you, you're obligated to be a morally pure individual because sanctification goes along with justification. Come on here. 1 Corinthians 15. I hope I ain't losing nobody. Whew. Verse number 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Come on, you know that ain't scientific. Hey man, you can't figure this thing out scientifically. This is a God thing here. But Paul had insight. He's saying something here that's paramount. He says, thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened except to die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body, that body, that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth a body as that pleased him, and to every seed his own body. So he uses agriculture. You plant a radish seed, but it don't look like that when it comes up. Plant a mustard seed, don't look like that when it comes up. Whatever seed you plant, in six to eight weeks, couple of months, it comes up. Amen. And guess what? You almost can tell somebody when it's coming up. If the climate's right, they'll say on the back, we used to have, we used to, have to, we had a little garden when I was in grade school, and we raised radishes, you know, little, little tomatoes and stuff. On the back of the seeds, it tells you how long it will be before it comes up. Boy, that, what a statement of faith. They, we know what they're really saying. God is so faithful that if I plant this seed and water it, we've learned that it just comes up in six to eight weeks. My Lord, because God is faithful. The farmer has a whole lot of faith to go out there and work from morning to night, huh? believing he's going to have a crop. But he goes out there every year that you might have some corn on your table. Amen. And it comes up right on time. God got this thing in order. Watch what he says here. All right. Then he goes on to say this. But God giveth a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fish, and another of birds. You see that right now. How come you can stuff a bear, but you can't stuff a man? You can go out and stuff a bear, a tiger, sit him in your living room. 
but you ain't stuffing no man. You can go out and catch a big fish, have him hanging over your mantle, huh? But not a man. Different kind of flesh. Then he goes on to say, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. He said, there's heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. You and I have already experienced the earthly body. So go, go on further. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. We said no two stars are alike. You know what they tell me scientifically? There are no duplicate snowflakes. Every snowflake that drops is different. Now how does God organize every snowflake to be different? There is no fingerprint like your fingerprint. Six billion, five hundred million plus people and nobody has your fingerprint. It's yours. Nobody has the inner working in the eye like your eye. He sure is creative. How does he form you in your mother's womb and give you a different, ain't that much room on a thumb to come with that many designs. But he can design every thumb that it'll be different and if you go down to the jailhouse, they got your thumbprint and they know if it's you or not. My Lord, that's a mighty God is he. To put all that artwork on a thumb, little thumbs, little white thumbs, little black thumbs, little yellow thumbs, all these little thumbs with a different print, my Lord, and will not mix your print from somebody else's print. Who said he can't do it? He can do anything he wants to do. Said, if I've given you an earthly body, I got a heavenly body for you. Those he justified, he glorified. You know what he said? I want you to get excited about what I've done for you. Amen. I want you to be so entrenched and engrossed by me that you just live and sing my praises all your sojourning on this planet. Amen. That you will exalt my name, that there'll be a witness in the land that there's no God like our God. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He's the creator and he is the sustainer. And so when you're asked about evolution, you say, can't go with that, running with the master. He created all things and by him everything was made that was made. And give his name the glory, he said, and then put a title on, said his name is Jesus. His signature is on everything. Give his name the glory. He's justified me and he's glorified me. And all I want to do is give him glory all the rest of my life. Hallelujah. Because I really do believe this thing and you should too. I'm certain. Amen. That the Holy Ghost is the seal and the validation and authentication of the salvation that we're enjoying tonight. Hallelujah. That's why we don't sorrow like those that have no hope. The hardest thing about a saint dying is just dying itself. Amen. When the death is over, amen, it's in the presence of the Lord. Glory be to God. Somebody done wrote an article that when you die, you just go to sleep in the grave. And he tried to use a few scriptures there. Amen. I was sharing with the class. Amen. Hallelujah. And I said, well, see, he didn't read enough scriptures. Anytime you're dealing with doctrine, you got to use all the scriptures concerning, amen, a situation. Hallelujah. He pulled out a few scriptures. Amen. And, 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 and talk about Stephen fell asleep. See, he's asleep. Yeah, his body fell asleep. But amen, man is dualistic. Hallelujah. May even be tritheistic. We have a little trouble separating the soul and the spirit. So we'll deal with the dualistic. Because the soul and the spirit are that which is immaterial. That takes a whole lot of faith to believe that you have an immaterial soul that will be housed, amen, in a glorified body. No different than your immaterial soul being housed in your present body. He just takes it out and puts it in another. Amen. So we are dualistic. There's the inner man and there's the outer man. When the inner man comes out of the outer man, he goes back to be with the Lord if he's saved. For to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the inner man comes out, and the only thing that goes down to the cemetery is the shell that the man once lived in or the woman. But they have now, amen, find themselves in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. And while we're shedding a few tears because we missed the individual, the individual said, don't cry for me. Amen. I just got my total healing now. 
and I've been delivered from the shackles of Torrance Hospital, Little Mary, Company of Mary. I'm now free. Amen. Hallelujah. No more oxygen. Amen. No more morphine drip. I'm free now. Just got delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because my body right now, whether you know it or not, all of us are having messages from the grave. Every time you take an Advil, that's a message from the grave. Every time you take a Pepto-Bismol, that's a message from the grave. Every time, oh yeah, oh yes, that's a message that you're wearing out. But thanks be unto God, I'm not depressed. For if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, I got another building eternal in the heavens. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Those he justified, he glorified. Hallelujah. When Jesus got up from the grave, amen, he showed himself by many infallible proofs for 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. And then he turned around, and I, I'll use this word just so you understand. He jacked them up. <laughs> uh-huh. Amen. Oh, ye of little faith. Amen. Thomas, didn't I tell you I was getting back up? He said, now take your hand and put it in my side. Take your hand and grab mine. I'm not a spirit as you suppose, because spirit doesn't have flesh and bone. You notice he didn't say nothing about blood. He just said flesh and bone. Because right now your life is in the blood. So when he got up, he had no blood. The blood had already been shed. When he got up with his glorified body, he had a different kind of flesh and a different kind of bone. He said, now give me some of that food that you're eating. I can eat your food, but I don't have to. And I can appear and disappear. I just want to show you what you're going to be like when you get your glorified body. Amen. You will not have the limitations of time, the limitations of what you eat. You'll be free. Hallelujah. You'll never be on another weight program, no Magosteen, no Genesis, Gensana, no nothing. You will be healthy and happy throughout eternity. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm looking forward to the glorification. I know about you. He said, Amen. Hallelujah. Let me read on down here before I got to quit. Thank you, Lord. Those he justified, he glorified. That's why the child of God, amen, was so cavalier in their deaths, amen, in the first century. They realized, oh, we, we're getting back up. Our God has promised it. He cannot lie. Amen. Hallelujah. Do whatever you got to do to me. Amen. But I'm not going to deny my God. Some of you read some of the book on Fox's book of martyrs. There's one church father that always stands out to me by the name of Polycarp. He said, 80 and 6 years have I served. He said, if you just deny him, we'll let you live. He said, now, amen, I've been serving him all these years, and he ain't never failed me. Amen. So if you have to burn me up, put me on the stake, do what you got to do, but I can't deny him. They went on, amen, and murdered him, but he never denied his God. And tradition says that as he was dying, the blood was coming up, gushing out so that it was putting out the flames. In which God was letting them to know, this is my servant. Amen. And though he's a martyr, I got a crown for him. Amen. No child of God dies in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. Those he justified he glorified. That's why we don't sorrow like those that have no hope. It's a win-win situation for the child of God. Thank God for the effectual call and thank God for justification and thank God in the past tense of glorification. Amen. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, he's more than the world against us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why you keep on, you keep on reading down. He said, I'm persuaded that there's nothing that can separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. He said, amen, I don't care if it's past, present, or future. There's nothing that can separate me from the love of God, not life, nor death, nor sword, nor destruction, or pearl, nor famine. There's nothing that can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm persuaded of that. I'm persuaded that the God that has begun this work in me, he will do it. And he has a body, amen, that he's going to give me. And not only that, I got a crown for you on that day. All of you that love my appearing, I got a crown for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why Paul could say, I've kept the faith. What was the faith? And the faith was in the object who is Jesus Christ and the work that Jesus did. I've kept the faith. I've not allowed myself to diminish. Amen. But he took me from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Hallelujah. Now I can say I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. I press toward the mark of the high and upper calling that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Glory to Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me read this latter part here. He goes on to say in verse number 42, so also 
in the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Look at the promise here. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a life-giving or a quickening spirit. Remember, Adam's life was in his blood. Hallelujah. But our life is in the power of the Holy Ghost. The same spirit that God gave you on the day you got the Holy Ghost, it's the same spirit that raises you up. It's the same spirit that will bring about the transformation when the Lord says, come my people. As soon as he gives the command, we will be changed in a moment and in the twinkling of an eye for we will take on our glorified body as soon as he says the word. But the power is already in you. I said the power is already in you. Hallelujah. The glory of God is in us right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. It takes you from glory to glory to glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to be raised powerful. First man was of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As the earthy, such they also are earthy. And as the heavenly, such are they also the heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of what? Oh, hallelujah. It's a certainty. We shall bear that image by the grace of our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord justified by faith. Uh huh. Glory be to God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Huh? Justified by faith, which was by grace, because you wouldn't have had no faith if he hadn't shown you grace. If he hadn't have come in the flesh, that we would have an object of faith, then we wouldn't be here tonight. So grace brought us here unmerited favor. There was nothing in God that said he had to save us. He could have started all over. But his grace and his mercy, we are objects of his mercy and grace. Oh my, he's extended us profound grace. Justified. Who would want to come to church, live in sin, when you know you've been justified and glorified? That shouldn't even be an option. Huh? My outlook overtakes my downlook. What I see in Christ gives me the momentum to keep doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't have been over here 35 years if I didn't believe this. I'm not just up here to entertain nobody. I really believe this. I am sure that the Holy Ghost is God's spirit. The liberation that we're experiencing is because of the grace of God. I'm stressing it. But we've been justified. Think about that the next time your flesh or the devil gives you a suggestion. Not here. I'm glorified. There's a place for me to sit in the kingdom of glory. If I follow him in the regeneration, he has rewards for me. And I want to say this, uh, if there was no reward, if I just went to heaven, and there's no crowns, if he just gave me a cap, I'd still serve him. So I was giving you a baseball cap, fine. Whatever you want to give me, fine with me just to be in your presence. Let me finish with this. This meant so much to Job and, and how he looked down through time. And Job says, and I've, read, I've used this so many times, I know that my Redeemer liveth. The one that purchased me, he liveth. He's alive. He shall stand at the latter day. And even if the skin worms, 
eat my body. Where did he get this from? Because he didn't even know the Apostle Paul. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Where did you get that from, Job? Who told you about glorified flesh? Hallelujah. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. But oh, now we, where the veil is taken off, and now we have received him, and he's given us power to be the sons of God, John kicks in, and he solidifies it. Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know this, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man or woman that hath this hope, they purify themselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I live the way I live because I have a doubt, I have a date with my creator. I've got a spiritual date with my creator. Glory be all, come on, y'all. Amen. I've got a date with my creator. He told me he was going to pick me up, so I'm waiting at the door. And I'll wait there until he picks me up. He promised he was coming back. I'll just stand here and wait till he picks me up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if he don't come tonight, I'll wait for him tomorrow. If he don't come tomorrow, I'll wait for him the next day. But I know one day he's coming back. And I'll be waiting for him with my lamp trimmed and filled. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank God we've been justified. Justified by his grace. Thank you, Lord. And has given us the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen, hallelujah. So we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I, I, don't, I ain't going to get to that. And we rejoice, Romans 5, he says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. That's what it says? Amen. That's why we rejoice. We know we shall be glorified. And he gave you the Holy Ghost as a deposit guaranteeing that which is to come. So as cheap as we are, we have the most expensive gift in the cheapest of containers. Melt it down, you ain't worth 12 bucks. But yet, amen, all the little chemicals in you, you ain't about nothing. Amen, melt you down, you're about 10 to 12 bucks. Amen, but thank God we have this treasure in an earthen vessel that God has given us of his spirit and bared witness that we are the children of God. Come on, say children of God. If children, then heirs. Heirs, join heirs with Christ. Join heirs. Come on, y'all ain't, y'all sleepy. I'm the one that ought to be tired as much as I preach. Join heirs with Christ. Oh, this ought to set your soul on fire. All the people that are dying every day, almost two every second, thank you, Jesus. And God has given us eternal life. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I didn't have time to get over to the book, amen, of Romans 9. Maybe one day I'll get to that. Amen. But he has showed us mercy. Somebody say, why did he show you mercy and show someone else? He didn't show someone else mercy in heart, their hearts. I can't figure that out. All I know is he showed me mercy. We could debate about that all night. Amen. But the proof is in the pudding. He showed me mercy, and I thank him for it. Amen. Hallelujah. You ought to be glad that God has showed you mercy. Y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm so glad I'm not full of disease. I'm not HIV positive. Not full of AIDS. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I'm not cracked out. So glad. Amen. I'm not smoked out. So glad. So glad I'm not drunked out. So glad. So glad I'm free. I said I'm glad about being free. I, 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 I can sleep now. I thank God for it. Amen. Don't nothing have power over me but the Holy Ghost. And I praise God. That's the power that got power over me. I can deal with everything else. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What we ought to be praying for is our brothers and sisters who done broke stride and done lost their joy. Too many right here done lost their joy. You know why? They food with sin too much. And so now when they come in, they ain't got no real joy. It's almost arduous to come to church. I don't never want to be like that. I want to be able to step in that door every time the door is cracked. Say, Lord, I love you and I thank you for letting me come through here. 
I praise you for so great a salvation. It's a joy to wave my hands and to sing my song. It's a joy to preach your word and to talk about you. It's a joy. Hallelujah. I'm going to quit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say, neighbor, there is absolutely nothing in your life, I don't care what it is right now, that should steal your worship and praise. There is nothing going on in your life that should steal your worship and praise. Because whatever it is, he can work it out. Whatever it is, he can deliver. There is nothing that should cause you to be anemic in your worship and praise. Don't let sin steal your praise. I don't care what it is or who it is. Ain't nothing gonna steal my praise. Not when you understand these doctrines. Justified, glorified, heir of salvation. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let the redeemed say so. How many of y'all spoke in tongues before? Spoke in tongues before? You ought to be slap happy. You ought to be slap happy. Man, I'm a tongue talker. That means I got the Holy Ghost. Oh, you ought to be slap happy. You mean God has sent down his spirit with stammering lips and other tongues while I speak unto this people? This is the rest. This is the refreshing. This is the righteousness. This is the peace. This is the joy. This is the hope. This is the resurrection. This is the power. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for mercy. Hallelujah. Have to give him a shanda. Glory to the name of Jesus. Bless his name forevermore. Give his name glory. When you think of his goodness and all he's bestowed upon us, ought to make a man or woman, amen, be slap happy. Ought to be so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We were once darkness, but now we are light. We were once lost, but now we are found. We were once the children of the devil. Now we're the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Give his name some glory. I'm finished for the night. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood has signed our name. The blood has signed our name. The blood of Jesus has signed our name and the Holy Ghost has sealed us until the day of redemption. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Tell somebody, I know I'm getting up in the resurrection. And in the first one at that. Tell, y'all ain't said, and in the first one at that, I'll be in the first resurrection. I'll be there when the trumpet sounds because he promised me and I love him because he first loved me. Oh, hallelujah. There's no way in the world for me not to make it. All the demons in hell cannot stop me from making it because no man can pluck me out of his hand. He that has begun this work in me, as much as I love him, I know he ain't gonna leave me down here. He's my everything. Not that I deserve it, but I know he ain't leaving me down here. My soul magnifies him. My soul does love him. I don't deserve it, but I praise him. Hallelujah. And because he loved me, Sister Sample, I now love him, and I'll forever give his name to glory. I will be there when the roll is called up yonder. God bless you tonight. God keep you. God bless you. Anybody want to be saved, come on down right now. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.